As with the case with Wundt and his experimental psychology, Freud did not long enjoy a monopoly on his new system of psychoanalysis. Barely twenty years after he founded the movement, it splintered into competing fractions led by analysts who disagreed with him and each other on basic points. Freud did not react well to these dissenters. Analysts who exposed new positions were scorned and vilified. No matter how close they may have been to Freud personally and professionally, once they abandoned his teachings, he cast them out and never spoke to them again. We begin with his daughter Anna who built on and expanded his work but remained loyal to his beliefs. We will also discuss the three most prominent descenders who developed their own theories during Freud's lifetime, Carl Jung, Alfred Adler, and Karen Horney. So let us review the Neo-Freudians and Ego Psychology. As noted, not all theorists and practitioners who follow Freud in the psychoanalytic tradition felt the need to abandon or overthrow his system. There remain a sizable group of Neo-Freudian analysts who adhere to the central premises of psychoanalysis but nevertheless modified the system. The major change these loyalists introduced was an expansion of the concept of the ego. Rather than being the servant of the id, the ego was seen as having a more primary and extensive role on its own. Ego psychology included the ideas that the ego was more independent of the id, possessed its own energy not derived from the id, and had functions separate from the id. Neo-Freudian analysts also suggested that the ego was free from the conflict produced when the id impulses pressed for satisfaction. In Freud's view, the ego was forever responsive to the id, never free of its demands. In the revised view, the ego could function independently of the id, which is the significant departure from orthodox Freudian thought. Another change introduced by Neo-Freudians was to place less emphasis on biological forces as influences on personality. Instead, more credit was given to the impact of social and psychological forces. Neo-Freudians also minimized the importance of infantile sexuality and the Oedipus complex, suggesting that personality development was determined primarily by psychosocial rather than by psychosexual forces. Thus, social interaction in childhood assumed greater importance than real or imagined sexual interactions. Sigmund Freud's daughter, Anna, was a leader of neo-Freudian ego psychology. The youngest of six children, Anna Freud wrote that she would never have been born if a safe form of contraception had been available to her parents. Her father announced the birth with more resignation than enthusiasm in a letter to a friend commenting that had the infant been a boy, he would have sent the news by telegram. Yet the year of Anna's birth, 1895, was symbolic, perhaps prophetic, because it coincided with the birth of psychoanalysis. Anna would be the only Freud child to follow her father's path and become an analyst. 
Let us move on to Carl Jung. Freud once considered Carl Jung to be his surrogate son and heir to the psychoanalytic movement, calling him, quote unquote, my successor and crown prince. After their friendship ended in 1914, Jung developed his analytical psychology, which opposed most of Freud's work. Now let us discuss Alfred Adler. Because he broke with Freud in 1911, Adler is usually considered the first prominent of the social psychological approach to psychoanalysis. He developed a theory in which social interactions plays a major role, and he is the only psychologist to have a string quartet named after him. An early feminist, Karen Horney was trained as a Freudian psychoanalyst in Berlin. She described her work as an extension of Freud's system rather than an effort to supplant it. Psychoanalysis became much more divided by its revisionist theorists. Freud's followers agreed that the focus of study should remain on unconscious biological forces or that people are motivated by sex and aggression alone. The result has been many more subschools of psychoanalysis. The multitude of viewpoints may be considered a sign of validity or of weakness. The developments are still history in the making.